Hi everyone, in this video on functions, we are going to be learning how to find vertical and horizontal asymptotes with our graphical calculator. And for that, we're going to be working with the example we see here, in which we're simply told, consider the function f of x, which is equal to 3 over x squared plus x minus 6, plus 1 at the end here, for x values between negative 10 and 9. We're then told, state the equations of any vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Okay, well, as you can see on the screen, I've got my calculator ready. This is the TI Inspire CX calculator, but whichever calculator you're using, the method I show you here will still apply. And so the first thing I need to do here is to plot this function on my calculator. And so for that, I'll toggle over to the graph section on my scratch pad here. There we go. And now I enter this function's equation. So that's 3 over x squared plus x minus 6 plus 1 at the end. So I'll type 3 divided by, and I open up a pair of parentheses for that denominator. That's x squared plus x minus 6. I exit that pair of parentheses, and I add the plus 1 at the end here. There we go. I'm happy with what I've typed, so I click on Enter. Next, before doing anything else, I need to make sure that my window settings on my calculator match the domain that's given in this question. So remember, we have to plot this curve for x values between negative 10 and 9, and on the screen here we can see that our x values go from negative 10 to 10, which in all fairness is pretty close, but for the sake of being rigorous, I'll go ahead and change that to negative 10 to 9. For that, I click on Menu, followed by the fourth option, Window slash Zoom, followed by Window Settings, which I click on. Now my minimum x value is negative 10, and I change the maximum x value to 9. And I'm happy with everything else, so I click on OK. OK, we've now plotted the function, and we can confirm that that's the correct function by looking at the label that we see here, 3 over x squared plus x minus 6 plus 1 at the end. And now that that's confirmed, I like to get rid of this label, so I click on it and I delete it. There we go. OK, now the first thing we'll see how to find here are the vertical asymptotes. And I'll quickly write that, vertical vertical asymptotes. There we go. Now, looking at our calculator screen here, we can see that this curve comes in three parts, and we'll often speak of three branches. Indeed, I have one part up here, another part down here, and another part or branch on the right-hand side here. And a nice rule to know is if we have a curve that comes in three parts or three branches this way, then we can tell right away that it will have two vertical asymptotes. And the rule that I'm following to say that is that the number of vertical asymptotes will equal to the number of parts or branches the curve has, minus 1. And so in fact, I'll quickly write that. There are three parts, or three branches, three parts, which tells us that there will be 3 minus 1, which equals to 2 vertical asymptotes. Okay, so we're after two vertical asymptotes. And any vertical asymptote to the curve we have here will be a vertical line that passes in between two neighboring branches. In other words, we're looking for a vertical line that passes between this first part or this first branch and the second one, so a vertical line that would shoot up the screen this way, and we're looking for a vertical line that would pass in between this second branch and the third branch, passing down the screen this way. And so before writing any final answer, I would recommend looking at the graph you have to get some idea of what the vertical asymptotes equation should be. So if I look between these two branches, for example, the vertical line would shoot downwards like this, and so using the x-axis I see here, since each of these little indentations is 0.5, it looks as though there will be a vertical asymptote when x equals to 2. So its equation would be x equals to 2. But we'll see if that's the case in just a minute. Similarly, between the first branch and the second branch here, it looks as though there'd be a vertical asymptote shooting down between these two branches, which would pass roughly at this point here on the x-axis. And so looking at the scale again, here we'd be at negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So it looks as though the vertical asymptote will be something like x equals to negative 3. And now that that's said, let's go ahead and try and confirm that with the calculator. And for that, I use the table of values in this calculator, which I can find by clicking on Menu, followed by the seventh option, Table, and the first option, Split Screen Table. So I click on that. Now, in the first column, we have the values of x, and in the second column, we have the output values, in other words, the values of f of x. And perhaps you've already noticed, but if I go to an x value of 2, it tells us that the value of f of x is undefined. 
Indeed, it's even written at the bottom of the calculator screen here, undef for undefined. And put simply, that's exactly what we're after. Indeed, this tells us that one of the vertical asymptotes is x equals to 2. And so looking at the graph we have on the left hand side here, that would be the vertical line passing through these two branches to the right here. Now let's look for the other vertical asymptote, the one to the left hand side. And so for that, on my table, I move up towards the negative values of x. And we quickly see that when x equals to negative 3, f of x is undefined again. Which tells us that the second vertical asymptote is x equals to negative 3. And so on our paper here, we can quickly state that the two vertical asymptotes are x equals to negative 3 and x equals to 2. And we're done. Those are the vertical asymptotes equations. Now before moving on to horizontal asymptotes, I do feel the need to say that this method will work provided the vertical asymptotes have equations like these, where x is equal to some integer value. If ever we had x equals to some decimal value, then our table of values would not be as useful, since as we can see, x increases in steps of one unit. And so although this method for finding vertical asymptotes with the calculator works, I would nevertheless strongly recommend that you always keep in mind how to find the vertical asymptotes by hand. Remember, vertical asymptotes will occur at any values of x at which the denominator we have equals to zero. So if we focus on this quadratic x squared plus x minus 6 for a second, we would find these same two equations, x equals to negative 3 and x equals to 2, by equating the denominator we have here to 0. And in fact, I'll quickly do that here. If we equate x squared plus x minus 6 to 0, then one way of solving this quadratic equation is by factoring. And in doing so, we quickly realize that we can rewrite this as x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals to 0. And for this product to equal to 0, either x plus 3 equals to 0, or x minus 2 equals to 0. And if I quickly write those, either x plus 3 equals to 0, or x minus 2 equals to 0. Solving this first equation leads to x equals to negative 3, and solving this second equation leads to x equals to 2. And as I'm sure you'll appreciate, the two values of x that we have here correspond to what we found with our calculator. That being said, let's carry on and see how to find a horizontal asymptote with our calculator. Horizontal asymptote. To find the equation of a horizontal asymptote, the idea is to look at what type of values f of x takes for very large and very negative values of x. The idea being there's a value that the function f of x is going to get closer and closer and closer to the further we go down on the right hand side of the x-axis and the further we go on the left hand side. And so still using the table of values that we have in our calculator, to find any horizontal asymptote, the idea is to look at the values in the second column, so that's the value of f of x, as we scroll down in the x column. In other words, we're going to let x get bigger and bigger and bigger and see if f of x gets closer and closer and closer to some value. And here's what that looks like. If I start scrolling down, in the x column, looking at the f of x column, so that's the second column, we quickly notice that f of x is just getting closer and closer and closer to 1. And that tells us that y equals to 1 is the horizontal asymptote. And so we can simply state that the horizontal asymptote's equation is y equals to 1. And I'll go ahead and box that result. There we go. And I should say for this function, if we were to scroll up in the far negative values of x, so I'm scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up, there we go. So as I go further and further down on the left hand side of the x axis, we can see that the values of f of x also get closer and closer and closer to 1, which confirms that the horizontal asymptote for this entire function is y equals to 1. And there we have it. That's how we can find vertical and horizontal asymptotes using our calculator. And to, and to finish, let me add one more thing, and that is how to write our answer when being asked for the equations of any asymptotes. For vertical asymptotes, it's very important that you state your answer as x equals to negative 3 and x equals to 2. Careful, just writing negative 3 or 2 won't do. You have to state x equals to each of those values. So any vertical asymptote will have an equation that looks like this, x equals to k, and that's what your answer should look like. 
Similarly, in the case of horizontal asymptotes, make sure to write its full equation. So in this case, it was y equals to 1. Just writing 1 wouldn't get us the points. So in the case of horizontal asymptotes, make sure you're writing your answer as y equals to some number, and in this case I'll just say y equals to c. And there we have it. There we go everyone, I really hope that helped, and if it did please hit like on this video, drop a comment down below, and even subscribe to this channel to help get this video to as many students as possible. All that being said and done, that's it for this tutorial.